Good evening and welcome to the So You Want to Major in the Arts webinar. On behalf of the Delaware Department of Education, I want to thank you for coming to hear from our esteemed panelists about all the wonderfully artistic opportunities available at our amazing institutions in Delaware, Delaware College of Art and Design, Delaware State University, and University of Delaware. You may not realize just yet in your path that you are on in ninth through 11th grade, what it might take to be prepared to major or minor in the arts. So we wanted to give you an opportunity to hear from the experts who can give you a bird's eye view into what the arts look like when you go to college, all of the different requirements you might need to have and what you might need to start doing soon to help you prepare. Before we get into it, I'd like to turn it over to my amazing colleague at the department in the Office of Higher Education, Karen Keegan, to go over some additional important information for tonight. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Karen Keegan from the Higher Education Office, as Dr. Conrad said. Um, I want to thank um, the University of Delaware's Institute for Public Administration for helping us run this webinar tonight. Kelly Sheritz is behind the scenes. They are our partners in much of our Delaware student success work with the Department of Education. Um, this webinar is being recorded. And so if you know, if you have friends who might not be able to join us tonight, or if you, there's something you want to re-see or re-watch, we will post it um, in a few days on our DelawareStudentSuccess.org website. So please feel free to um, pass along the information, you know, that others can watch this as well. And also, if you have questions along the way, please put them in the chat and we will get to the, we will get to your questions at the end after the, the team here has presented their information. So as you think of your questions, please put them in the chat. So thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. Uh, we are just so delighted to have this evening before us. Uh, as Karen said, I am Dr. Lauren Conrad, and I am the Education Associate for Visual and Performing Arts at the Delaware Department of Education. And before you tonight, we have some amazing panelists from our three institutions of higher education in the state of Delaware. So the first person you will have the opportunity to hear from tonight is Randall Reed. Um, and Randall says that uh, his relationship with DCAD began in 2005 when he enrolled as a full-time photography major after he earned his Associate of Fine Art degree from DCAD and a Bachelor of Fine Art degree from Pratt Institute. He has held multiple positions at the College from Assistant Director of Student Services, part-time faculty for the Continuing Education Department, to Director of Community Programs. As the Director of Admissions, he wants to empower aspiring artists and designers with the opportunity to realize their potential of becoming an industry professional, no matter of race, gender identity, or economic background. He looks forward to getting to know you and your work, so apply today. Our next panelist will be Lynette Overby. Lynette is a graduate of Hampton University, George Washington University, and the University of Maryland College Park. Uh, she is the University of Delaware Director of the Community Engagement Initiative and Founding Director of the Partnership for Arts and Culture. She also directs the UD Dance Minor and is the Artistic Director of the Sharing Our Legacy Dance Theater. Her publications include the Journal of Dance Education, the Journal of Mental Imagery, and co-editor of nine volumes of Dance, Current Selected Research. Leadership roles in dance education have included service as president of the National Dance Association, president of the Michigan Dance Council, and president of the Delaware Dance Education Organization. Overby received the 2018 Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Dance Education Organization and in 2020 served on the Biden-Harris Agency Review Team in Arts and Humanities. Recently, she was inducted into the Academy of Community Engagement Scholarship and in 2021, she was appointed to serve on the National Council, Council on the Humanities. Next, you will hear from Dr. Derek Thompson. 
He is currently in his third year at Delaware State University, where he serves as the music program director and director of choral activities. Dr. Thompson also serves on the board of the Delaware chapter of the American Choral Directors Association as chair of diversity initiatives and president elect. For eight years, Dr. Thompson taught in the Virginia school system, teaching elementary general music and conducting middle and high school choirs. He has also served as an adjunct faculty member at Lynchburg College and Teachers College, Columbia University. His research interest involves developing the young singing voice, communicating in the choral rehearsal and teaching methodologies for the choral and applied voice setting. His most recent publications can be found in Core, Core Teach, Practical Teaching Ideas for Today's Music Educator. Dr. Thompson is a baritone, choral conductor, and music educator who continues to serve as an active recitalist, chamber musician, and operatic performer. You will then hear from Billy Colbert, who is a multidisciplinary artist, associate professor of new media and the director of the art program at Delaware State University. He has shown extensively throughout the country. Many of his works examine cognitive dissonance in popular culture and celebrate the unsung contributors to American history. Colbert has artworks in numerous private, public, and museum collections. Colbert earned a Bachelor of Science from Frostburg State University in graphic design and a Master of Fine Art from the University of Delaware in painting. At the University of Delaware, Colbert was a presidential fellow. We will then go back to the music world for a bit where you will hear from Adrian Harding, who is the admissions program coordinator for the University of Delaware School of Music. Adrian oversees the admission process, including auditions, scholarship, and recruitment for undergraduate and graduate music programs. She is also a native Delawarean and has a first generation college, and as a first generation college student, she is proud to call herself a UD alum, having received a Bachelor of Music and a Master of Music in Flute Performance, and is currently a doctoral student in the Educational Leadership Program with a concentration in higher education. And our last panelist that you will hear from this evening goes back into the visual art realm. It, Greg Shelnut lives in Newark, Delaware, where he serves as professor of art and chair of the art department of art and design at the University of Delaware since August of 2017. Previously, he served as chair of the department of art at the university. Previously, he served a, as chair of the department of art at Clemson University. From, 20, from 2000 to 2011, he served on the faculty at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts, serving as director of the visual arts program for six years. From 1988 to May of 2000, he taught sculpture at the University of Mississippi, also teaching for the University of Georgia's study abroad program in Cortona, Italy in 1991. In 1992, he was a visiting artist at the Victorian College of the Arts in Melbourne, Australia. He has had residencies at the Community Council for the Arts in Kingston, North Carolina, the Association for Visual Arts in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the New York Mills Arts Retreat in New York Mills, Minnesota, and 121 View Street, La Trobe University Visual Arts Center in Bendigo, Australia, and elsewhere, a living museum in Greensboro, North Carolina. Grants supporting these residencies have come from the Jerome Foundation, Mississippi Arts Commission, the Arts Council of Winston-Salem, Forsyth County, and the Serdna Foundation in New York. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you our first panelist for the evening, Randall Reed. Hello everyone. I just need one moment to pull up my presentation. Uh, Lauren, thank you so much for that warm introduction. I really appreciate it. Um, the Delaware College of Art and Design. We are the nation's only private two-year art and design uh, college uh, in the country. That's pretty amazing. Uh, we offer an Associates of Fine Arts. Um, and at our core, we value dedication, creativity, accomplishment, and diversity. Uh, and we see that in our student population. Uh, we see that in the work that our students make, and we see that in the curriculum that we deliver. Uh, DCAD empowers uh, emerging artists and designers just like you. We engage and inspire in an inclusive and diverse creative community. 
We offer an associate's degree in either animation, illustration, graphic design, fine art, or photography. As an art and design college, your focus is going to be on your studio work. So you'll spend about 70% of your time uh, in the studio and then 30% of your time in a liberal arts program. We offer a foundation year. So regardless of major, all of our students take the same classes. Those classes are like 2D design, drawing, 3D design, 4D design. You're learning all the fundamentals of art and design that you can add to your artistic tool belt and then employ within your major. When you graduate from DCAD, you'll have a portfolio of work that will enable you to complete uh, your BFA and transfer or jumpstart your career. Cool. All right. Just like Delaware, DCAD is a small but vibrant community. We have a close-knit and diverse and inclusive creative community of about 200 students of artists and designers. We have supportive faculty of professional artists and designers who provide meaningful mentorship. Our student teacher ratio is eight to one. So this ensures that our professors get to know you, your work and help you maximize your potential. You know, the one thing about artists is that we all learn in a different kind of way. So in a small class setting, our professors get to learn those that like, that are kinesthetic learners like me that learn by doing, they can help guide their class for visual or audio learners. So it's great to have that kind of flexibility to help support you when I try to explain, how do you make this color green? It's not a simple, a simple answer. So to have that community there to support you is really important. We say that we're smart. You know, we are accredited through NASAD, which is the National Association of Schools of Art and Design and Middle States. What does this mean? It means that some people have taken a look at our curriculum and have decided that it's at a certain standard um, that's gonna be meaningful to you. So when you're looking for art and design colleges to go to, look for schools that are accredited. That means that the work, time, and money that you've put into those credits, those credits can go with you pretty much anywhere you want to go. More of our students graduate on time versus in a four-year art and design school, at, which is just amazing. With that two-year program, from start to finish, we're there to help you uh, make the way to graduation. On average, DCAD costs 30% less than other art and design institutions. This is important because college is an investment uh, in your future, and why not spend less at the beginning of this journey? DCAD is a spirited community. So what does this mean? You have an opportunity to curate your own exhibitions, initiate clubs, program activities, and explore art and culture in Wilmington and beyond. We have student participations in activities with our college traditions that build our community. One of my favorite traditions at DCAD is our Spirit Week. We're not talking like crazy socks or crazy hair day. We're talking uh, making your own voodoo dolls, carving your own pumpkins. We center our Spirit Week around the week of Halloween, which I feel like is the perfect time for artists to come together and celebrate their skills and their voice and vision. And last of all, we have support services offered to all of our students, such as our preferred name policy, uh, on-campus counseling, gender neutral housing, emotional support animals, uh, and more so that your needs are met both in and outside of the classroom. As a two-year school, uh, we want to give you options. Uh, we are articulated with other art and design colleges. So what that means is that you can spend your first two years here at DCAD, and then you can transfer to a four-year institution to complete your bachelor's. Uh, and you can seamlessly transfer into these programs. The one thing that I want you guys to think, not only am I talking to students, but also parents, even though DCAD only offers five majors, there are unlimited possibilities in the art world. If there's one thing that this pandemic has taught me, creativity is one of those things that we all need to decompress and kind of find some joy in our lives. Um, there was a survey that went out by the Strategic National Art Alum Project that was really investigating the value of going to an art and design institution and what that means for you as people. Uh, and those survey results brought back that over 90% of folks that graduated from an art and design program are gainfully employed. About 74% of those are actually gainfully employed in their field, 
So this is really important for those folks that tell you, like, if you're going to go into art design, you better get used to waiting tables or painting rooms. That is not the case here. Uh, only about 4% of graduates from an art and design program are actually unemployed. Things that companies are looking for, number one is creativity. And creativity is one of those things that you just can't be taught. It's something that is in the core of your soul that you're, the colleges that you're looking into are gonna help grow and blossom that for you to share with the world. Our grads work for a variety of different companies. One thing that you have to keep in mind with an animation degree, there are more job opportunities than just working for Disney or Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. Every company needs a creative to help tell their story. Uh, the one thing that I will leave you guys with tonight that I want you to think about through the, the rest of this presentation is about visualizing yourself within these programs. Here we have Liana Bacani. She graduated in 2019, transferred to Moore with a five-figure scholarship. She's now a full-time graphic designer for Moxie. When I visited DCAD, I instantly felt comfortable, immediately felt at ease, and the students' artwork that I saw inspired me as well. The one challenge that I give to you, uh, and I know that the Delaware Student Success Collaborative is offering these opportunities for students, go visit the schools that you're interested in. Take a look at the work on the walls. Take a look at the students that are there. Meet with the professors, speak with them. If you are inspired in any kind of way, then that's how you know that that program is gonna be the right fit for you. Uh, this is, like I said, a huge investment in your future. And you wanna make sure that you're gonna thrive within that community. And I'm certain through all of the presentations that you hear today, you're gonna to find at least one program that really resonates with your creative spirit. Um, As far as application process goes and portfolios that we're looking for, we just wanna see your best work. Now is the time in high school to really explore your voice and vision. We get it that you don't have access to all of the stellar supplies that might be out there in the world. That's why you go to art school. So we like seeing drawings from direct observation, um, different kinds of mediums and materials, really whatever speaks to you. Uh, we want to see that and start to get to learn more about you and how you're going to contribute to this creative world. Um, so thank you all for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, uh, admissions at dcad.edu. And I encourage you to follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Our handle is dcad.edu, so that's D-C-A-D-E-D-U. I'm sure you'll find some work that inspires you. Uh, and I hope to see you on campus sometime soon. Randall, thank you so much. That was a great start to our evening. Um, remember everybody who is uh, attending tonight, if you have questions for Randall or any of our other panelists, please feel free to put them in the chat. We have time at the end for Q&A, so we will be happy to get those questions answered from our panelists this evening. We will also be sending you a bunch of links after tonight, since we have all of your emails. We have lots of good stuff to share with you from all three of our institutions, uh, so you can do some exploring uh, after tonight. So without further ado, our next panelist is Lynette Overby. Thank you, Lauren. And I'm going to share my screen as well. Yeah, so I'm uh, really happy to talk to you about our theater and dance minors. Um, this is a program, uh, so we don't don't have a major, but we really call these interdisciplinary uh, programs because you can major in anything and also have a minor in theater and dance. Move this out of the way. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk first about our dance minor. Our dance minor began in 2009. And um, as I say, it, it, it really has evolved as an interdisciplinary uh, program. So for the dance minor, uh, these are some aspects. 
we have academics, performance, research, choreography, uh, re uh, recreation, and uh, a way to graduate with honors. So as far as the academics, um, to receive a dance minor, um, it's only you know, about 17 credits, and you will have courses in technique, choreography, electives, uh, a required course in careers in dance, so you can see all the options that are available, and our capstone. I just want to talk a little bit about our capstone because it really is a unique program where students in any major who have a dance minor must create a project that integrates both. For example, this semester, I have a student who's a marketing major and she's creating a marketing plan for her home dance studio. A student who's in criminal justice major and she's uh, looking into programming in dance for incarcerated youth and uh, a biology student who's creating a, a choreographic work on the process of the coronavirus. So we have uh, many uh, opportunities, but that's one unique area where you can major in other things, but still have uh, your dance in your life. <laughs> Um, as far as performance, we have an annual dance concert. We just had our concert in early March. Uh, last Chance to Dance is every dance class gets to share at the end of the semester in one of our large theaters, something that they learn during the semester. Um, and these are some other projects, our Storytellers League, we have faculty projects, and then our RSOs, those are registered student organizations. There are several uh, dance opportunities, dance fever, uh, there are just uh, many that you can participate in um, as an, in a performance setting. We also um, have students involved in research. Um, for example, I've uh, I'm, uh, worked very closely with a literary historian, Gabrielle Foreman, on uh, looking at ways that we are telling the stories of little known African-Americans uh, through theater and dance. Uh, this is actually a picture from one of our, our, uh, our works on uh, cotton and the art in the background. We saw his interdisciplinary artist, Jonathan Green's paintings, music uh, composed uh, by uh, many times mu musicians from the university and beyond. Uh, and choreographers. So it's an opportunity as well to go beyond um, just dance and incorporating other disciplines into the work. Um, students have the opportunity to choreograph as well. We have a senior choreography award. We do independent study, we mentor. And because we have several registered student organizations, there are many opportunities for students to choreograph and perform. And then uh, as far as recreation, we offer classes in ballet free for our community members, um, as well as modern and uh, sometimes other, uh, other uh, techniques as well. We have a National Honor Society for Dance Arts. We've had this since about 2010. And students, many of them go to our National Dance Education Organization Conference, and they uh, are able to graduate with honors when they uh, achieve that. Uh, this is my name and my email as a director of the dance program. I'm gonna move now into theater. <laughs> we have three theater minors and they're in uh, performance, uh, study, and production. And um, so these are just some photos from uh, our theater minor. The REP, which is our professional company, and this is an opportunity for undergraduate students to perform with the REP. For example, in 2019, students were part of Inherit the Wind. And then we have uh, other opportunities as well. Um, but many students participate in our RSOs for theater. And um, uh, this is one, and I'll move this out of the way so we can see Harrington Theater Arts Company, which is 45 years old. <laughs> And then E52, which is 96 years old. 
Uh, we're very proud of our healthcare theater. And this is another interdisciplinary opportunity where we have students who are in health sciences and arts and sciences, and they create these interactive uh, programming um, where the, the health professionals through role playing learn how to work with variety of populations um, before going out into the real world. <laughs> Alan Carlson and Amy Coperthwaite are the founders of that program. This is their mission statement. This is the building where it's housed on the Star Campus Healthcare Theater, transforming interprofessional education. Um, so that concludes my presentation, and I'm going to stop sharing if I can. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, just to say, um, as we said, this is an interdisciplinary program. Uh, it is a minor, minors in dance and in theater. Um, but provide that opportunity for you to major in um, anything and combine your uh, interest uh, in your profession with your passion for dance and theater. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Overby. We appreciate that. Um, Again, if you have dance or theater questions, make sure you're putting those in the chat so that we can share them at the end of the presentations tonight. Uh, we are going to move now uh, to Dr. Derek Thompson from Delaware State University. Get my screen shared there. All right, hi everyone. I am so excited to uh, share information with you today regarding our music programs um, at Delaware State University. Um, so what do we have to offer? At Dell State, we offer uh, four majors. We have a BA in music education, a BA in music, which is our performance route, um, a BA in music industry, and a BA in pre-music therapy, which is our newest program uh, that came over when we acquired Wesley College. Um, at the beginning of the year. So that's our newest program on campus. Um, we also offer a minor in music. And I would also add that we have a minor in theater that's through the music or through the English department. Um, and then we also have some extracurricular um, activities such as dance and musical theater that takes place and includes um, the music department as well throughout those, um, throughout those extracurricular activities. Um, the first program that I would like to mention to you is our BA in Music Education. Um, so the Bachelor of Arts in Music Education um, leads vocalists and instrumentalists uh, to uh, a K-12 grade Delaware State teaching certification, um, which prepares them for future, future music educators uh, for the 21st century classroom and beyond. Um, the music education degree program includes the study of primary instruments, um, secondary instruments. Um, of course, you'll have courses such as music theory, music history, piano, music technology, performance ensembles, uh, conducting, and of course, your education courses uh, that are designed to help you to develop the skills and knowledge that's required um, in the education field. Uh, music education students are required to um, observe experienced teachers in the field during um, what we call EFE hours, early field experience hours, um, while finalizing their studies uh, with you, a full-time teaching uh, experience as a pre-professional teacher. Um, these experiences are designed to, to help you to prepare um, to enter the profession, um, to make sure that you, you know, you're qualified and ready to excel in your degree program. Um, and this is a four-year uh, degree program where you can take vocal or the instrumental route. Uh, the next degree program is our Bachelor of Arts in Music. Um, and so this is to really help you to provide a solid foundation in musicianship um, as a well-fundamental studies in music performance. Uh, so even though it doesn't say BA in music performance, that is what this degree offering is. Um, so we offer two concentrations in this degree program as well, uh, vocal or instrumental. Um, and both of the concentrations, you're going to enroll in eight semesters of applied music, 
Um, you're going to perform in a variety of ensembles. So you'll be taking sometimes more than one ensemble during the semester. Um, you're going to present junior and senior recitals um, in those you know, range and time length based on the year, which one you're gonna be doing um, and the primary work that you're going to include into that. Um, additionally, you're going to take, you know, the, the main courses again, um, that we have music theory, ear training, piano, music history, um, and various other courses and electives um, to make sure that you're prepared for the next step um, that you would like to take along with this musical career. Um, oftentimes, we have uh, a new class called Collaborative Works um, that is ran by our coordinator of music industry program. Uh, Dr. Tali. And so that collaborative work includes um, this year, what we're working on is he wrote a, a musical, a hip hop opera of um, Romeo and Juliet. And so this year it was supposed to go for the stage, but due, of course, due to the pandemic, uh, we were not able to do that. So we're going to make a movie. Um, and so we're going to be recording it around different places of Delaware that will give us that Romeo and Juliet feel um, or environment. And th that is our collaborative work course. Um, we also have opera workshop. We have a course that was designed for students um, who want to who participate in um, ensembles or different performance opportunities in the community. They can also register for that course and the instructor will kind of follow them along through the process while they're either rehearsing or performing with this outside group um, and receive credit for it that way. So we have multiple performance opportunities or ways for you to receive credit um, for, those, for those programs. Uh, next is our BA in music industry. And this is what I would say one of our most popular um, courses on the campus and um, so, the BA in music industry provides uh, students with a variety um, of careers in music uh, in the music industry field. Um, so we go from management to publishing to producing, recording, performing, and so many different options that you can take with this degree program. Um, it's very comprehensive education wise, um, also giving you a little bit of uh, the BA in music ad, the BA in music to uh, kind of just make you well-rounded in the music industry um, based on if you're working in the studio or not. So as you can see here, some of the studies that you're going to include, again, we have the theory piano history. Um, we're gonna add in a big portion of music technology, um, adding in music business, songwriting and recording. Uh, the students in the music industry program uh, before they graduate, part of their requirement is um, being able to make sure that they have um, their own work produced. And so that will go through our student run um, record label called Class Records. And so that uh, Class Records provides, you know, an on hand, hands on experience, um, which helps you to kind of lead into internships um, and giving you the skills that you need with the music business. Um, so that is one of our more popular. Uh, programs that we have uh, here at Dell State. Um, again, our newest uh, program is the BA in pre-music therapy. Um, and so uh, all of the programs are four-year degree programs. Um, and this program is combined in with our psychology department. You're going to take, again, your core music requirement courses. Um, we're gonna ask for this program that you take a major applied lesson, and then also a minor applied. And so for the minor applied, we're going to ask that that one be based in voice or guitar because that, that is what you oftentimes see um, in the pre-music therapy field. Um, and then here, uh, just examples of the psychology courses um, that will be included with this program. So again, this is new for us coming over from Wesley. And so we're able to kind of, you know, rework this program a little bit to make sure um, that it has our students provided with the needs um, for them to go out and continue their degree if they're going to go with the MA um, in music therapy moving forward from there. Um, we also have some uh, 
wonderful ensembles on campus, a variety of ensembles. So if you're looking for something on the vocal choral end, we have the University Choir, which is our largest ensemble. Um, and that is, ensemble is the, the main ship ensemble of the university. Uh, this group follows the president wherever he goes. Um, our biggest concert performances, you're going to always see the University Choir. Uh, we have the Chamber Singers, which is around 12 students. Um, and we do more of the a cappella smaller works. Um, we have the Choral Union. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do the Choral Union this year um, due to the pandemic, but the Choral Union is our ensemble that is open to students, faculty, staff, community members. Um, and so we have a mix, um, a mix of people in this um, ensemble, the Choral Union. And usually the choral union will join in on a performance with the university choir chamber singers. And they're going to do the larger works, the works uh, with orchestra. Um, so we, before the pandemic, we got to do Handel's Messiah. Uh, we started working on uh, Schubert's Mass and G. So they're doing some of the larger works. Um, we had the marching band. Um, the marching band, you will see they're actually um, in New York today performing there in New York. Um, and so the marching band is one of the fellowship band ensembles on campus. Uh, we have the concert band, jazz band, pep band. We have steel orchestra. So we have quite a few different chamber ensembles, smaller ensembles, brass, woodwind, strings, percussion. Um, and then we have a popular music ensemble, which goes as part of the music industry program. And so I thought that I would share just a little clip here of some of our students in action from their recitals. Um, and a little bit from the ensembles here. So that pro uh, provides you with just a little glimpse into the program here. Um, oh, there we go. And so just so that you know a little bit about our facilities, um, in the picture here, we have our Education and Humanities Theater, uh, which seats about 985 uh, individuals. We have our Art Center Gallery, which where we have most of our recitals, uh, which you saw in the first couple of examples. Um, we have the Recording Studio and the Music Technology Lab, uh, which sets up for 10 students at a time in there. Um, and so that's where all of our tech things happen. Um, and I also wanted to include just quickly a student testimonial, uh, which includes Vaughn Morgan, who is a graduate from DSU um, and a teacher in the Red Clay School District. My name is Vaughn Morgan, and I'm a 2016 graduate of music education from Delaware State University. The comprehensive music experience and education I received while at Delaware State helped prepare me for a life as an elementary school music teacher. My fieldwork experiences, along with the support of the faculty, prepared me to enter the classroom confidently from day one. As I now finish up my fourth year of teaching, I'm grateful for how the music program at Delaware State helped shape my character, build resilience and ensure that I can make my mark on the world. And so as we move forward, 
Um, I just wanted to share contact information. I put in QR codes for the music webpage um, and also a QR code for our music audition application um, that takes you there. And I also wanted to add before we move forward is that DSU has what we call the Inspire Scholarship, uh, which is a four year full tuition um, Inspire Scholarship. And so this goes to qualifying students. Um, the only thing that you have to do is graduate from a Delaware high school, um, enroll at Delaware State uh, full time the fall semester right after you graduate from high school. Of course, keep your grades up. We're looking for a GPA of at least a 2.75 or higher. Um, file your student aid and you know, keep your good conduct, uh, student conduct. Um, and those are the things that we look for, but it's a, you know, a fantastic um, opportunity to get all four years of your tuition paid for um, with this Inspire Scholarship. So um, here's our contact information. And I hope that if you need to reach out to any of us, um, send us an email, call us. We'll be glad to, to talk to you more about what we have to offer. Thank you so much, Derek. That was lovely. It was so nice to hear some music. Thank you so much. Um, so we are going to move into uh, the art side of things at DSU. And remember, put those questions in the chat so we can get to them at the end of our presentations. So without further ado, uh, Billy Colbert, you are up. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'd like to thank Delaware Division of the Arts for having us. Um, for all of you students out there, it's a wonderful time to be an artist. I mean, if you look at it, the pandemic has done so much to us physically and emotionally. But what we've realized is art has kind of taken a step forward. Um, we can't even get through our days without art. And we've realized how much we need digital media, whether it's TikTok or being able to communicate like we are on Zoom. I mean, it's just something that's just kind of taken over. As an artist, and I see design, or even if it's something functional that happens on a computer, we're problem solvers. And I think that we need to take this time to really understand where we stand with the whole idea of art and where it's going. So what I would like to do right now is show you a video because this is kind of the video age. I know I have nieces and nephews who are always talking about TikTok and they learn things that way. So I've decided to put a video together to give everybody a better understanding of what we do at Delaware State University. Welcome to the Art Program at Delaware State University. Although we are located in Dover, Delaware, we are comprised of a diverse group of creatively ambitious students from all around the world. The majority of our students are from Delaware and the surrounding metropolitan areas of Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. The Art Program at Delaware State University offers a Bachelor of Arts degree in three majors, Studio Art, Art Education, and New Media in Arts. The New Media Arts major allows students to draw from the fundamentals of computer-based art, design principles, the visual arts, and the social sciences to help develop and explore the practice of art merged with technology. We encourage experimentation collaboration, and social engagement to expand the career opportunities of our students. The studio art major at Delaware State strikes a balance between artistry and academics, and between creativity and career development. Working with accomplished artists in a professional environment our students develop advanced studio skills along with the discipline, work habits, and intellectual depth necessary for success. Because our program improves the mind as well as the eye and the hand, our graduates thrive in a broad range of careers, including advertising, design, and digital multimedia. In addition, 
many of our students go on to graduate school. The art education program combines strong academics with practical teaching experience in real world classrooms. Because of Delaware State's strong reputation for teacher preparation, our art education graduates compete very effectively with the job market. Our education degree also offers excellent preparation for postgraduates. Delaware State has contemporary art facilities, plus an outstanding gallery in which students and faculty members can exhibit their work alongside nationally renowned artists. The program operates on the philosophy that artists are essential to civilization. The art program at Delaware State University. We are the foundation for your future. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I feel like Delaware State University is a hidden gem. I think that we have a lot of promising things that a lot of people don't know about. And over the 11 years that I've been here, I've seen the university grow. I've seen students go on to do amazing things. And it's just kind of that hunger that comes in. And like I said, right now is a wonderful time to be an artist. Uh, we have three majors in the program at Delaware State University. We have a studio art major, we have a new media major, and we have an art education major. Um, so everybody who's kind of looking for a place to land and does not want to be in that starving artist category, I think we have a home for you at Delaware State University. Um, we're moving forward, we're growing, and we'd love to have you. Um, all of the information is on the, um, the list that's going to be sent out at the end. And if you need anything, feel free to contact me directly. Um, Billy Colbert, and you can go right onto the uh, Delaware State University email and email me at wcolbert at desu.edu, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. And for those of you who um, are going to get the report at the end, my information is on there. And if you have any questions, you could reach out to me. And if it's a question that I can't answer, I will send you on to one of my colleagues. But I'm just happy to be here, and I would love to have any students who want to pursue a career in art be a part of Delaware State University. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was some wonderful information. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank so you. we're going to head back to the music world for our next uh, panelist, and we're going to hear from Adrian Harding from the University of Delaware. Adrian, you are muted. Sorry about that. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to be on this panel and to hear all that uh, the wonderful state of Delaware has to offer students. Uh, besides being a proud UD alum, uh, I was also fortunate uh, to be able to attend many pre-college programs at the University of Delaware. And I think that they are a wonderful resource uh, in, for me for my college preparation and helped me to navigate the college landscape. So although it's not quite uh, what I prepared to talk about, I don't want you to miss out on those opportunities as a, a pre-college student if you can take advantage of those type of resources as well. The University of Delaware is a top tier uh, research institution and it's known for the highest level of academic achievement and world-class faculty, um, exceptional student body. And it's important that uh, music can be a lifelong and should be a lifelong pursuit for, for students. And regardless of where you are in your pursuit of music, there are avenues for you to participate in your music making at UD. Uh, we offer eight music majors, five music minors, and opportunities for non-majors and opportunities uh, in the community as well. 
What's important to know is that music majors uh, require an audition on a primary instrument. And the bachelor of music degree is for those who intend to become professional uh, musicians, educators, practitioners in the field of music. Uh, the Bachelor of Arts in Music is more versatile and uh, it's more similar to a liberal arts degree. And students who take this degree can flexibly set the stage for advanced education in history and literature, uh, music therapy, music industry fields, arts organizations, um, uh, professorships at, at universities. Uh, some students find the BA compatible as a double major as well, because it provides the most flexibility to take general education courses in areas that interest you outside of music. Um, also, you can pursue a BA with or without music management concentration. Uh, this concentration is added um, as an organizational it's an arts organizational and business practice uh, concentration. And students who take this have also have the option to do a four plus one program. Uh, this combines a liberal arts music major with a master's degree in business administration uh, to be completed in a fifth year of study. All majors involve a fundamental study in music theory, sight singing, oral skills, music history, piano, uh, weekly private study, vocal lessons, and ensembles. There are five music minors that we offer, and they're, all of them are required uh, with audition. And uh, with the exception of composition, all of them are open uh, to anyone who's a student at UD. It's important to keep in mind that music uh, minors, and if you wish to double major, that you must be an enrolled student to do those uh, two options. But once you're a student, uh, there are opportunities for you to audition um, for those two opportunities. Honors private study is also um, a benefit for students who are freshmen in the honors program who wish to have music lessons. Um, and these auditions are held at the start of each semester. So the opportunity to perform is really important at UD. And we are one of uh, the largest performance venues in the state of Delaware. And uh, the opportunity to perform is open to anyone who is a student at the university, uh, regardless of your major. Uh, we have opportunities for a large ensemble uh, down to instrumental and vocal ensembles in chamber music. Uh, so you can see some of our opportunities listed here, but it's important to consider that um, these provide uh, opportunities for, for serious performers, as well as uh, a fun and enriching extracurricular activity for students campus wide. Uh, in fact, our marching band is probably the largest draw for ensemble performance, and the university offers a small scholarship to students who are enrolled in the marching band, which increases a little bit each year. Um, and this is a, a, a way of thanking uh, the students for their hard work and participation um, as being such a, uh, a visible uh, uh, part of the university. So did you know that UD has America's first study abroad program? Um, it started in 1923, so we're almost up to 100 years. And students, um, music students, can take part in study abroad uh, in London or Trinidad and Tobago. And in addition, our ensembles uh, tour and travel the world. And our um, wind ensemble will be traveling to Prague this summer and our uh, chorale will be uh, traveling to Croatia. So we are looking forward to those opportunities as well. In addition, our students have the opportunity to take on special projects uh, such as student teaching and internships and study abroad and research, writing a thesis um, and, and all of these really enriching um, experiences. In addition, we have a community music school, which not only provides a platform for students to teach and hone their skills as artists and teachers, but provides a service to the public um, with programming and enrichment and education for all ages. 
So why UD? I think this is a really uh, important thing for us to consider that we're sitting in this and probably all of our programs tonight can, can speak to this on some level. Uh, that we're in this real sweet spot with access to resources and our proximity to New York and Philly and DC and these major uh, cultural institutions. Um, we're close to the Metropolitan Opera, the Philadelphia Orchestra, um, the Kennedy Center, uh, some of these world-class institutions, um, and they actually come to us as well. Um, this access uh, provides a two-way benefit for our students and for visitors. Um, in addition, uh, we have we benefit from having full time advisement for our students. We have an in house full time advisor who works with our students from freshman year all the way through to senior year, um, which is really important because really being a music student involves a matrix of different uh, decisions and course courses and things like that. So um, it's a really uh, important job and it's a really holistic job when you when it comes down to it. Students involved in music uh, tend to be really, really um, motivated and engaged. They're leaders in all kinds of activities on campus and um, they're ambassadors for the for the School of Music, but also the university at large. Um, so we are really, really um, grateful for the students uh, that we have at UD. Um, but we also have phenomenal faculty and our faculty are, uh, they're traveling the world, they're teaching, they're presenting, they're recording and collabor co collaborating. Um, and I think what's really special as well is that um, our students benefit from a lifelong mentorship uh, through their relationships with the faculty. So uh, if you haven't already, I do encourage you to reach out to a faculty member who is involved in a discipline that you're curious about or that you're, you're interested in, in learning more about because chances are they're really interested in getting to know you as well. Another important thing uh, is our facilities. So uh, if you're going to spend four years at an institution, um, you better make sure it has the resources to support you while you're there. And uh, we do have spaces that um, are really special for each of our music making experiences and even, um, you know, the spaces that the part of the space that you don't see in a brochure, the acoustics are uh, really phenomenal as well. So the application process and the audition process are really um, important to throw out there to you. So um, I'm happy to talk to students about this process, but just to give you a little bit about that, um, it requires uh, an audition um, and it's a two-stage process. So you would submit your application through the common application or coalition application, and uh, then you would subsequently have an audition. Our deadlines are typically um, to have an audition sometime in January, and the application deadline is typically in January, January 15th. So um, I would keep an eye out for all of this information on the University of Delaware web pages. The School of Music website is music.udel.edu. And that information is usually updated every year if there's any changes. Um, but we would want you to know about that because of uh, the Music Merit Award. Uh, students who complete their application and audition are automatically considered for a Music Merit Award. So if you haven't already, please come visit us. There's lots of opportunities to connect with us again and again. We have sample lessons sometimes that uh, for prospective students that are interested in a lesson. Um, they can contact the student, excuse me, a faculty member um, to inquire. Uh, we have info sessions regularly. Um, we have fall open houses for the School of Music as well as campus-wide open houses. There are virtual tours that are available upon request, of course, live uh, performances, and of course, our social media pages. And I'll just leave you with this last question. Um, think about what can you do with a music degree? School of Music graduates are placed in jobs in various sectors. So what comes to your mind when you think of what you can do with a music degree? Is it teaching? Is it performing? Is it composition? 
If you guessed any of those three, uh, you'd be correct. Um, and those are the most common answers. But I also would you, want you to consider there's many, many other options. And many of our students go on to graduate school and go on to these professional careers in other areas. And what's phenomenal is that we have 100% job placement rate in many of our fields, including music education. So students are employed in music. Uh, and so that's really great. Uh, to, and to learn more about that, we do have some resources where you can look further into um, what the career outcomes are. So if you have any questions about anything I've shared with you, please reach out to me at musicadmissions at udell.edu. And our website is music.udell.edu. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Adrian. What wonderful information. Um, and last, but absolutely certainly not least, we have Greg Shelnut, also from the University of Delaware, uh, bringing in visual art for our last panel to this evening. And again, if you have questions, make sure to put them in the chat because that will be coming up very soon. Thanks so much. I really appreciate the, 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 the time and the, and it's been really educational for me to see everybody here too. So I'm going to go ahead and start my presentation. Let's see from, let's see, slideshow, play from start and we'll go from there. Um, just want to make sure, you know, welcome to the University of Delaware and you've all heard that tonight and just the rich things the state has to offer. Um, we have four different degree programs, three for undergraduate students. So one is the BA in art, one is the BFA or Bachelor of Fine Arts in Fine Art. A Bachelor of Fine Arts in Visual Communications, and an MFA in Art. One really important thing about the MFA that our graduate students help us in the classroom. They're there to help assist, make the classroom spaces run well. They also sometimes teach for us, and they're really phenomenal teachers. They all take a pedagogy course prior to entering the classrooms. They get trained how to use, you know, teach you and how to be effective instructors. Um, we have no portfolio now required for the BA in Art. We made that change so that we could open up the degree programs. You can also draw, apply directly to the visual communications, one of our most popular majors, the portfolio, and directly to the fine arts program with a portfolio. So we really encourage portfolios. You can use them for all of them, but if somebody didn't have a portfolio, you're certainly welcome to apply to the BA without that. I wanna make sure people often go, you don't have graphic design, do you? Because we have visual communication. I wanna make sure you understand that graphic design is an integral part of visual communications, and we do teach it, but what we really teach is design thinking. You know, how do you empathize to find, ideate, prototype, and test? And that's something our students are involved in. They get real world problems to solve. We have a lot of our alumni and industry leaders coming back to give scholarships, to give assignments, to be parts of critique. So you get that experience from us. And so we do have graphic design, but it's what you'll call it visual communications or VC, as we like to call it. Um, I tried to compress a lot of slides because I know I knew I was last. So let me a uh, real quick tour of our sculpture facility. It's phenomenally large, a huge metal shop that's in two parts. There's a wood shop you can't see, a metal casting foundry. We do bronze and aluminum. We cast that regularly. Students are those were students pouring the metal. We have a letterpress shop. We go old school analog and digital. So we have this lead and wood type press, phenomenal facility. A lot of visiting artists and bookmakers come for that. Printmaking, we just got new presses recently. We have stone lithography, planographic process. We have intaglio etching. We have screen prints, a whole other room you don't see. It's full of screen print stuff. And of course, um, uh, just every printmaking technique you can think of, we do it. Ceramics, we have a very well equipped ceramic studio with lots of wheels, as you can see, but we have extruders. Uh, we have slab rollers. We have a whole room full of kilns, electric and gas and test kilns. Uh, painting and drawing studio is one of three painting and drawing studios we have. Uh, we have lens media. We call it lens media because we teach analog wet photography in a dark room. We also teach digital photography. We got recently a huge collection of cameras donated to us, so lots of facilities there. We have a maker gym that the entire campus can be a part of, but we were integral in telling them how to make that gym work out. And what you see in the little blue box behind the couches is a whole bank of 3D rapid printers. There's a CNC machine, one heck of a CNC machine, and then drill presses and hand tools, you name it, that's available to students. And our faculty are deeply involved in how that place operates. We have our annual undergraduate exhibition. Here's where you see a photograph of Jeff Kim's piece in there. We've had print sales out on the street in downtown Newark. We also are a screening site for the Thomas Edison Film Festival. 
So our students get to be involved in two ways. You get to be a pre-screener and help determine what movies get sent on to the final destination. And then we get to see the final destination, you get to see the movie screened. We have the newspaper, the review, an independent newspaper, but our students staff that. We've had students work as writers, as copy editors, as designers and illustrators. You see a lot of our students doing illustration. Um, we also, one thing you should always ask about at any school you go to, wherever you decide to go, is what kind of support is there for research? So as an R1 high research university, University of Delaware is, we have summer scholars and summer fellows. Summer scholars gives $4,000 to do your work. You can work with a professor on a specific project because students go to Idaho or for John Cox to, di to document different folks from different diasporas and then refugees out in Idaho. We've had students travel anywhere you can name or also just stay home and make art. So there's some Isaac Rodriguez's illustrations he did working with a faculty member one summer, beautiful illustrations that he did there. Um, one thing that was asked was, what do you want to see in a portfolio? And one thing I think we often miss in a portfolio are sketchbooks. And you think, gee, I'm going to give you one page of a sketchbook. Well, no, do it like this. Give us multiple pages of a sketchbook in one place. And I've thrown in both, you'll recognize that some of you, there's Julio Gonzalez and Henry Moore, another famous artist in this, in, this, in this illustration. But everything from a person taking a rubber stamp and making a really cool drawing to doodling, to just lots of words and text, to Roy Shark inkblot things, the drawing in 3D on a sculpture. So I love that kind of stuff. Show us your ideation. How do you come up with ideas? How do you work through an idea? How do you push it? How do you bend it? How do you morph it? Ideas, ideas, and research, research, research. We're really a heavy research institution. And you'll get to do that too if you come here. I wanted to show this. So this ideation, this is actually a, a, a 12th graders portfolio I grabbed online. Really great illustration of somebody talking about how did they get there? We'd love to know, how do you get to ideas? What we really think is vital in art and design is solving the world's problems and addressing them in important ways. So that's where ideation, where do you go? How do you build? How do you develop? How do you steal effectively? Here are some things, this, these are actually two student examples of two students watching the same lecture. So I teach this class called Core Colloquium, visiting artists come in. We had a really amazing visiting artist come in and talk, and she was just brilliantly funny. And these students are reacting to what was said, and they're taking sketch notes. You may use this in your schools, this technique. I require it in my class, where you have to both use graphic capture and word capture, and you actually are shown to retain 33% more by using sketch noting techniques. So it's really been pro profoundly transformative for me to watch our students do this. But again, what really matters at UD are ideas and how you develop them, how you push them around, and how you have find opportunities to make your ideas come to fruition. One thing that's important, we are a Carnegie classified engaged campus. What does that mean? We actually have been rated by the Carnegie Foundation to be working in communities. So one thing we do is with the Partnership for Arts and Culture, and we think art and design solutions can address social, educational, environmental, historical, and personal problems, and create global understanding, and we seek to make social change. So art as a vehicle to change the world we live in for the better. We really believe in that. And that's something we also have, you can get a, a certificate as a, an engaged student, as a, as, and Lynette can speak about this. She's in charge of that program, really wonderful program where students have gone in and they are engaged with communities, making a difference where you live. I um, wanted to make sure I, we have somebody mentioned video and illustrations. Here's a video one of our students had done. Well, there is a student here. Those done using a lot of rotoscoping techniques and drawing techniques too. So in terms of the, I, you've heard this before tonight, but the idea that arts, the starving artist is a myth. It's not true. Artists have an incredibly strong and robust way of making a living. I went on, if you look at, if you look at UD art and design, you type that into, in, into um, you know, some of these search engines, you will see lots that I did scroll down on indeed.com to look at students' first jobs. There's so many great first jobs listed in there. And these are right after their internships. So one thing to note, we have an incredibly robust alumni network. 
and alumni, as I said, come back to do design briefs. They also help place our students who are required to have an internship in the visual communications program. And you may have one in art and design. You certainly are not required to have one, but you can have one. So there's something to be known. And you can do multiple internships while you're here at UD and get credit for them or just do them as, as experiences in and of themselves. We highly encourage you to get paid. Art does pay, get paid. <laughs> um, what do our students do when they get out of here? They work for places like Grand Army, where Ben actually did an internship there first. And we actually, in the, all of the upper level creatives at Grand Army, all four of them are all UD alumni. We're very proud of Grand Army. And that's something, and, and Ben's one of those people there. Um, we also, Kyle Hackett, he got a BFA in painting. He went on to get, a, a lot of our students going to get a master's degrees. So Kyle taught at, at Micah. He just got a job as, a, as an assistant professor at tenure track at, Mer at, at, at James Madison. He was also teaching at, at AMU in Washington, DC. So really fine, fine painter. Um, Lindsay Schmidl is one, one of our alumni. She comes back a lot and she does great stuff in the print shop. She owns Dingerly Press in Pittsburgh, PA, but she just you know, spent 20 days in Peru in January going through the Amazon, paid fully funded by the ASIR Foundation and One Planet to study the impacts of climate change and to interpret that in printmaking. And she's just started down that road of doing those interpretations. One of her past books about going on a hike, the Appalachian Trail, was purchased by the Library of Congress. You just don't go put any book in the Library of Congress and actually search for it. And actually other places like the New York Public Library bought a copy too, phenomenally cool book. Who can, she comes back a lot. Jay Thompson's BFA in Visual Communications. He's an art director in Los Angeles and working with just, just some little known people like Alicia Keys. You know, we have people working with really amazing folks doing design, art, and all sorts of impactful stuff. Study abroad was mentioned already. One that wasn't mentioned, and this is really rare, I think, UD actually will help fund and pay for some of your time doing study abroad. So we have scholarship, need-based scholarships to help support you. You think, I can't go overseas. No, because we have the oldest, bar none, study abroad program in the nation, we also have quite a foundation that backs up that study abroad experience. So this summer, we are going back to London. It hadn't been in a while because of COVID. We're going, and we have actually been, last time we went, and we often go in the winter. One thing that's unique about UD structure we have a winter session. So a lot of our students study abroad in the winter when it's cold, when they get the heck out of Dodge, go to Tanzania. But John, but John, John Cox goes there. Amazing, amazing, cool stuff students have done. And this has led to many a career happening. Also, people ask about summer programs for youth. I know rising um, juniors and seniors can apply for UD Edge. We have a course in portfolio preparation, drawing and 2D design happening this summer through UD Edge. So do keep that in mind and prepare to be part of that. And there's information on how to apply for the UD EDGE program, but also the application materials for UD and for the art and design will be in the list of things that are sent to you. But again, my email is g, as in Greg, S-H-E-L-N-U, g shellnu at udel.edu. And I'd be glad to talk with you. Um, I'm the only shellnut on the art and design page. Um, that's it. So thank you. And uh, I'll stop my share and we can get on to Q&A with everybody. Thank you so much. All right, that was wonderful information from everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we have about 16 minutes and we're gonna try and fly, fly fast through some of the questions that we've received. So our first question is going to be, do, do, do. So Greg, you answered this a little bit, but perhaps um, if, if anyone else wants to chime in, with the animation courses, will you be able to design and make anime drawings move? I draw anime and was hoping that maybe I could get some more information on the animation topic. Thank you. Anyone care to chime in? All right, Randall, go for it. Yep, so anime is a huge thing that people are really into. Um, for DCAD, and I'm certain with other art and design schools, with your anime, we don't want to see an anime that already exists. Like, sure, Dragon Ball Z is amazing, but I would love for you to create your own original characters. And then from there, we'll teach you how to make it move. I know at DCAD, we have a pre-college program. So that's for anyone, um, ninth grade and beyond, um, where you can get some college level class experience. Um, so check out all of these schools pre-college programs. I'm certain there's something that will fit what you're looking for. I'd say we would just see original drawings as much as possible and, and in terms of like an, 
And we want to see you're drawing from life. We want to see anything you develop. Really, we want to see you push ideas around on paper and form, whatever they may be, and really just your best work. And then also writing about your work. You have a place to explain what your work's about. Tell us what the ideas are and what you're trying to say and do with your work. That's super critical. Thank you. This is a fun question. It could probably take until next Tuesday, but maybe a couple of tips. Uh, this is a great one. How to choose an art or music major when you have several interests in the arts and music departments? One idea I had for that question, um, at, at UD, what I would suggest in terms of the School of Music is the BA. Um, as a practical answer to that question, um, because we do have a number of students who do want to double major or have interests in other fields. The BA is our most flexible way to do that because that's our more liberal arts space degree. Um, and that is the one that will allow students to take about 30 to 40 percent of their core music courses but the rest uh, can be built up in other areas of interest. So if there are um, students who want to double major or have a specific area um, of focus, then that would be my, my way to do it. Anybody else want to chime in on that one? I think Anything? I would. Go I would. for it, Derek. Um, just about going about choosing. Um, I know that's, you know, it, it's tough, um, but make sure to, to go out to the schools um, and really meet the instructors. I think that's a big part um, because you, you may find that one institution or program within an institution um, is more down the path that you want to go to, but you can always minor in the other, or, you know, you can double major um, and make sure to ask those questions is it reasonable? Is it possible? Um, I, you know, I remember as a student myself asking, because uh, I wanted to do instrumental and vocal for some reason um, as an as a undergraduate student. And my professor said yes so quickly that I was like, hmm, let me think about this again before, you know, going forward. But ask those questions. Make sure, because you never know um, what direction you want to lean in. I, I knew that I wanted to do musical theater as well. So that was my extracurricular activities that I wanted to participate in. Um, just because I know with me going music education, as Ms. Harding said, that was, you know, a lot heavier than the BA in music route. So just ask those questions and see what's flexible for you um, and doable in the time that you want to be um, a student. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, we had another one hot off the press. How would you choose between graphic design and illustration? I'm currently stuck on which one to choose. I don't know. I'll let Randall jump in too, but I don't think you have to choose necessarily. I don't think they're so separated as you might believe. They're actually highly deeply integrated and they talk to each other. So you'd have a chance in taking a broad spectrum of courses that could feed you in both directions. So it's really about your portfolio, your passion, where you want to end up in the industry. Randall? Yeah, it's all about the kind of skills that you want to acquire in college. When you go out into the real world and get a job, you're rarely going to find one that's just illustrator or graphic designer. They have a lot of synergy with each other. So think about the skill sets that you want to invest in, uh, and that will help guide you in, into the right direction there. Bill, you might, you're muted. You might want to say something about it too, I'm sure. Yeah, as a, as a student whose parents made me look for a job that I could find in the paper, and I had to design versus going fine art, I think the best way to do it is immerse yourself in all the things like and just kind of see which one carries you through and which one you're more comfortable with. Because now technology is as such that there's very little between, but you're still gonna end up doing a lot of these things at work. You're still gonna be pinch hitting. So it's good for you to kind of have all those skills and just kind of take whichever one latches on to the, uh, to the. Thank you, thank you. Um, so we had a couple of questions come in uh, 
for registration. Uh, this one is specifically geared toward music production. Um, how do I create a portfolio if I choose to go into music production? What is the best app or software to use for music production? I'm afraid I don't have anything to offer that um, because we don't have that program, but I do know that we, um, we offer some courses. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if Dr. Thompson might want to chime in there. That is a tough one. Um, <laughs> and, and the first thing I was like, oh, geez, can I text Dr. Tolly real quick? Um, so, oh, geez, I wish I, wish I had more, more on that. Um, what I would say is I know that for, for us, we're really big and, um, and using, so really big with, uh, I want to say the, the Apple connections, I, I want to say iTunes, but I know that's not the actual uh, name of the program that I'm looking for. Um, oh, geez. And I'm, I'm looking here on mine just to see if I, if I have it here. Logic might be one of them um, as an as a uh, good music industry program, or yeah. um, probably not GarageBand, but we use that a lot in uh, in K twelve education. I would also say to you, what you could do is reach out to us by email, and we'd be happy to get you in touch with our professors that are using the, the software. So if you contact me at musicadmissions at udell.edu, um, I'm, I'm happy to connect you with someone who can tell you more specific, and I'm sure Dr. Thompson as well. Certainly, dthompson at desu.edu. Okay, we had a question go into the chat um, that said, when you went over the field that DCAD offers, I saw a tattoo field. In that field, would it be similar to an apprenticeship? Thank you. And so Mr. Reed put into the chat, but we can see the chat. So I'll go ahead and hit that. And then um, if you'd like to articulate, feel free. Um, so DCAD does not offer tattoo as a major, but the skills you would glean as an illustration or fine arts major will help you when creating your designs. You will still need an apprenticeship as a, at a certified tattoo studio. So hopefully that helps to answer your question. Um... So I'm going to, I'm going to hold off on the next question for just a second, because I'd like to talk a little bit about two different things. Number one, many of you spoke about portfolio requirements or audition requirements, but we may not have as ninth through 11th graders uh, who might be on this call, a good understanding of what an audition or a portfolio even is. Um, so if you want to just take a quick moment to talk about what those requirements might be, and if there are requirements uh, for the dance or theater minor for an audition, that would be great to know as well. Uh, and the other part of that question, this is a, this is a wordy one. What are some things that our ninth through 11th grade friends who are joining us this evening could be doing to start to prepare now uh, for their senior year and, and getting ready for that process? So anybody who wants to tackle that first, please feel free. Um, I think one of the things that's really important is to develop your hand and develop your own skill. I think that's something that as artists, a lot of times people get confused and they feel what they're creating doesn't look like something that's already been created. But the beauty of art is you're creating something that is coming to you. So it's good for you to develop your hand and kind of move away from, you know, seeing materials and different things. That develop your hand, develop your voice as an artist. Yeah, I, I just jumped in there. I couldn't agree more, I think. But, and it's also part of their question that we, we didn't answer is, you know, having to be good at something. 
I don't think it's a prerequisite to being a major in, in, in the visual arts at all. I think you can come, if we're worth our salt as teachers, we can take you where you need to go. And I also believe that having a passion for something, that's what we dropped part of the portfolio requirement for the BA is we want to just let somebody in who just, I just want to try this. Great. Come on and try it. And we'll challenge you plenty. And, and I, I go back to people like Linda Berry, who's an award-winning cartoonist who talks about being run out of art school nearly because she wasn't thought she was good enough. And yet she's now got incredible awards and a great, great long history. So don't be driven away by the doubters and the naysayers. Put yourself out there and try. I want to say that's that's wonderful advice. Um, as far as music is concerned, I would say um, specifically we have uh, requirements that varied by instruments. So I would say take a look at the school's website uh, to make sure um, what the requirements are for your instrument or, or the major that you're intending to apply for. If you have questions, reach out to the faculty member in that area. Many times they, um, especially at the University of Delaware, they're, they're happy to give you a sample lesson and talk you through those requirements. Um, sometimes the requirements are as simple as two contrasting pieces. Sometimes they're a lot more specified. So you wanna be mindful of that. Um, there are some other resources that can be really helpful to you. There's um, things like musictheory.net and um, uh, some other uh, ways for you to really engage with your music learning at this stage before college that I think will not only help you feel more confident about the music learning process when you get to college, but also um, just to keep you primed and in that spirit of um, ready to receive instruction and things like that. Um, but I think your best bet is, is curiosity, determination, and also um, connecting with someone. Um, if you are interested in learning and doing the work, find someone who can work with you. And if you're not who, sure who that person is, start with um, our professors here at the University of Delaware, and we can sometimes help navigate uh, to find a private instructor for you backwards. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Overby? Uh, yes, I, I just wanted to mention, um, there's another program at your high schools, the AP uh, programs that are also a good way to um, delve into uh, the art forms. For example, there, if you have AP research, you can actually propose to learn about history or some aspect of the arts that you may just have a good question. And then you can have a mentor from one of the college from Delaware State or University of Delaware um, that could uh, assist you in that study. And then, you know, going to college, you might be interested in dance or theater anthropology or music, uh, you know, combining uh, uh, interests. So uh, it's another option and another opportunity. We have, we need to have more people in the arts who are researchers and scholars uh, and to start in high school would be a great thing. Thank you. Thank you. We have one last question in the chat um, that I want to make sure we get to. Derek, I saw your hand fly up, so I want to make sure to get to you. Uh, and then I'll have one closing thing to say, and then we will be finished for the evening. So uh, the last question in the chat says, so for the DCAD college, do you have online classes that high school students can enroll in? Yeah, just check out our Young Artist Program website um, and see what kind of classes are offered virtually and in person. Um, yeah. Awesome. Dr. Thompson. I just wanted to add, um, and I know I can speak for myself, and this will probably go for many of us. When you start looking into institutions and deciding where you want to go to, um, especially I'm just thinking about the audition process for music, just remember we're not we're not looking for you know the top classical musician, or if you're going into music industry, we're not looking for you know, the next Whitney Houston or whoever. But what we're looking for is we're looking for students um, that are willing to, to put in the work and we can see that 
they're going to make progress, um, that they're willing to put in the work and make progress. Um, so when you go in for your audition, your audition time is really for the committee just to see where you are at that moment um, and how will you will be able, how well um, you'll be able to pro progress over your time there um, in the university or program. So, thank you for that. Thank you all uh, for helping to answer those questions. Um, so, we had put in the chat from um, Mr. Shelnut visit the campus, lead with your heart, and go with your gut, which is phenomenal advice. Um, if you are in ninth through 11th grade and you're in this session right now, or you are watching it in the future, uh, this is just the beginning of your journey. And we wanna make sure that you are armed with all of the knowledge you can have as you make your way through. So this is just one single step in the process. And we hope that tonight has given you some good information on how you can proceed forward. And you have an army of people from all three of these institutions, from from the Department of Education and from your home schools that are willing to support you in this process. So if there's anything we can ever do for you or more questions we can answer, please don't hesitate to reach out. We will be sharing some links with you tonight. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. Thank you to the University of Delaware uh, for hosting. Uh, thank you for all of our panelists for your amazing knowledge and sharing tonight. Uh, thank you so much to all of you, and we wish you nothing but success as you move forward. Uh, if we can help you in any way, we would love to. So thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Yes, thanks so much for the opportunity. Thanks, y'all, for coming. Thank you. Goodbye.